Hello everyone, my name is Ilya Ewell from Decorah, Iowa. I've been an artist here for 27 years and have loved every minute of it. I'm known for, at first, my hand sculpted faces in my Santas and in fact was in the Better Homes and Gardens magazine, a seven page spread quite a few years ago now, and also in their book. But then I expanded myself. I started working with textiles like old woolen sweaters and made mittens and duke gloves and scarves. And about five years ago, I started Nuno felting, which is a magical, if you've never done it, you need to try, using loose wool fiber. And you lay it down thinly and spray warm water over it and soap and agitate it. And all of a sudden, this loose fiber becomes a solid piece of material magical fun. The last thing I've been doing is our aluminum journey of life. Pins and necklaces. This is one of the chokers that I have on right now where you take normal aluminum wire and with a process with hammers and pressing it down you form jewelry. It's exciting being an artist. You have so much fun and every time I open up the doors into my studio I have joy and excitement and the possibilities are endless. So today I decided to go step by step through one of the Santas that this year, he's my 2020 limited edition, only because I can't make more than that, 20 of them, and um, he's going to be called the Hiking Santa. And I want to introduce to you three important words. The first word is inspire, the second word imagine, and the third word, create. So, what is it about inspiring? I want you to think about, especially as an artist or somebody who wants to be an artist, don't just look in a magazine, don't just look at Pinterest, go to art shows, go to museums, go to galleries, go shopping to Hobby Lobby or Joann's. And my favorite thing is, Take classes in whatever you're interested in because those professionals can show you. Sometimes that inspires me into a whole new direction. Another time I go, that was a lot of work. I'll make two. So please be inspired by things. And the first thing that you're going to see me inspired was an ornament. It was a skate. I took off the bottom. And I went, oh my gosh, these shoes are better than anything I could make. And I went, what can I do with this guy? The other thing I found is the hiking Santa, which he's going to be, will have a stick for hiking, but you know, it can get kind of dark out. I've looked for lanterns everywhere, and all of a sudden, three weeks ago, I found this wonderful lantern, perfect size. So I'm looking at these and going, this is how I'm going to start to create. The other things I can use now, after I've imagined what I want to do, I've got to imagine also how I'm going to accomplish this. How do I build this body? And also, what other products do I use? So, I'm going woodland, I'm going rustic, and all I can think of is beautiful wool sweaters and pants. Do I buy or knit a sweater? I don't think so. I have downstairs a stash of well over a hundred sweaters that I can go through by color and pull them out. I just brought a few for an example. And some of these you'll see later today, but like a Scandinavian look, a rustic look, soft wool heathers, light blends, beautiful subtle stripes. What's fun about these sweaters when you go shopping for them at the depot or Goodwill, you don't need the right size. You need a color and a good feel. The other thing I collect because I love wools is wool pants. If they have a hole, if they have a stain, if they've been shrunk, it doesn't matter. So I'm recycling and using these beautiful pieces of textiles that could be thrown away and I get to make something out of them. So now I have been inspired. I have imagined what I want to do it. I need to now create. The first thing I'm thinking of is I want a solid base. I want him to be able to stand. So, 
I've got very strong copper wire here. I drill holes in the bottom of the boots and I bought a wood base. And I put them down there and I'm going, this feels good. I think I'm gonna have a solid body. But the base looks way too stark and even a stain would draw away from the Santa. This is not the most important part. So the next thing I did was covered it with boiled wool. And now I have a neutral zone to be able to put my shoes on and my Santa on, and it's going to give a more balanced look. So now, remember when I showed you those old sweaters? I'm gonna show you. Then I had to design a pattern. This, and this, and this, this and these are all the sweater that I cut up. The hat, the body of the sweater, the arms, and the bag. It's crazy what you can get out of an old sweater. And then I went downstairs and found these beautiful old wool herringbone jacket, which just matches with it beautifully. So after I get this cut out, of course we need legs, and I just do two tubular legs. And then this is the same, just showing different colors. Um, and then I actually put a pool noodle about six inches long and that becomes his sturdy body. And after you get that body put on it, then I do an overlay body and then I stuff him so he has a cute little butt and a cute little tummy. And I'll show you that next. Here he is. He's still not looking much like a Santa, is he? All the time, I always safety pin my whole outfit to the Santa so I don't have to think twice. And you can see we've got a little tummy on him, a little butt. I get his little pants ready to go. And we've got his upper torso. There would be also tubes on his arm. And the most important part, because we're going to change to the next look, is the size of his head. Now that I know this, I have to look in amongst the molds that I made from hand carving and found out that my big one is too big, my medium size is too small, and I have to create a new face for the new 2020 Santa. So we're going to go to my sculpting table. So one of the funniest things I get from people when they come here and see my show is they go, oh my gosh, I love your Santas. Where did you buy the faces? Can I get some? And I laugh because they don't understand. That's what makes my Santas different. If you're porcelain, they're too white. If they're plastic, they're too fake. If they're resin, every single one looks exactly the same except how they paint the eyes. So for me to make my Santas, I sculpt them. So to the start out, remember, I have the wrong size. I'm gonna show you some that I've used literally hundreds of times. This is how I make them, but how do I make them from this indented little mold? I first have to hand carve a face. So this face is the bigger than my large face and smaller than my medium Nissa face. So I had to get to this, do the eyelids. This is called a straight cut because what happens is when you make a mold out of it, if you curve too underneath the nose or if you curve too much underneath the lip, they're not going to take in the mold and you'll be ripping the, the super sculpey right out of there. So we do what we call a straight cut and get as much into it as we possibly can. Then I bake this in the oven. Super cut sculpey, best stuff in the world. 275, 15 to 30 minutes, depending on the uh, depth of your clay, in your oven. So I have an oven out in my garage and that's where I bake them. So I bake this little man here. This is my 2020 Santa. I got done sculpting him. And then I loosened up the clay, made it into a big ball, and press straight down into the mold. 
If you wobble, his face is going to be wider than you want. If you go up and down, you may smear the nose and you're going to have to remake the whole mold again. So it's a straight down and press. Then you bake this in the oven. Now, now I'm ready to do with what I've done with these molds already. So here's my super sculpty clay. And I'm thinking I'm going to need about that much. The first thing I usually do is twist it to start loosening it up. You don't want a lot of holes in it. And I'll press it down to make sure there's less holes in it. And this might be a little too big of a piece. And we'll twist that off. Then you roll it and press, roll it, and press. And I'm looking, I'm right, it, that's way too big. So I take some off. And then I roll it and I try to put just a little ice cream cone bottom on that bottom there. Noticing there's a dent, I need to smooth that out because that's going in my little man's nose. I then, ah, where'd I put it? Here it is. I then do a little talcum powder. This clay is fabulous and flexible. However, it could and will stick and you don't want that to happen. So I go into my new clay mold that I made, tap it, blow it, and press. Notice how I started in the middle and I'm pressing outer so I can get the cheekbones, the chin, everything in there. And now I have the beginnings of a face. Now needless to say, you're going to look at him and you're going to say, hey, he doesn't have his eyeballs in. Hey, he's not too interesting looking yet. What am I going to do about that? Well, I'll show you. I grab seed beads and I get the right size which are a medium size, and I just place them there. These are dental tools. I swear by these. And I put a slice into his eyeball, pull up a little bit, and pull down a little bit, because we don't want to wreck the sculpture. Pull up a little bit, pull down a little bit. I fold it back just a smidge. I find two seed beads that are about the same size. And I place them into the eyeball socket. Now, if you get lazy and you close up the lids, you're going to have this guy who's going to be cockeyed. I'm just going to tell you. So you take some extra time with your little sculpting tool and you make sure that his fate, his eyes are in there securely, not too close, not too far away. And there we go. Now I want them to stay steady. So I take my very small sculpting tool and I go like that. And that's just like, you know, prongs on a diamond, right? only a lot less expensive. And the next thing is, this is Zad's character. If you have your eyes bugged out, this is not a sincere, happy-looking, gentle Santa. So the gentle lids, especially with age, gently go down. And you just press it and just keep on sculpting until it feels right. And remember, as we get older, one eye is going to look bigger than the other. One eye is going to be more saggy than the other. So instead of trying to be perfection, you actually want slight imperfection because that's what we enjoy with age. So now for the next step, we need to put some little nostrils in that boy. So this is a great little tool. There are two rounded ends for the smaller Santas and for the larger Santas and you just stick that in there and pull it off to the side and then just use a rocking effect 
and all of a sudden you have a real nostril, not just a weird dent. Go in again and rock it from side to side. And now our little boy is almost complete. The one thing I found out early, Super Sculpey is wonderful coloration. But if you don't add color to his cheeks and forehead, you will get a very light-faced, plain one color. So this is my rouge, graded. I have darker and lighter mixed with just a little sparkly. And the one thing is, it's going to look like I'm putting a lot on when you see it on him, but I always kind of shuffed it off to the end and only start out with a little bit at a time because sometimes it goes on really dark. The good news is oven fixes everything. But you can see here already how he's got a natural reddish glow. So now I'll do the other side. And this little boy is ready for the oven. And of course, we're not going to take time to bake it today, but I want to show you some that have come out of the oven. And I also want to show you how wonderful it is to be able to use Super Sculpey clay and be able to individually do the eyes and everything because no matter how you try, just like each one of us humans, you will never be able to make the exact same face. The clay, when it's baking, changes slightly. Your just sculpting in a certain way changes it. So one, one of the most magical things is nothing is the same, and that's just the way I like it. Each one defines its own personality. When I look at this one right here, he's soft and gentle. See that kind of face? This little guy's kind of mischievous. Notice how his eyes are a little more sparkly. And this one, I think he's had a long day. He's a little more like, I'm done now. So each one of these are just so much fun to do. And until you get the beard on, you will not know how the personality pops. Now that we've gotten this part done, we're going to show you how funny they look on when you first attach them to the Santas. All right, so get ready to laugh because there's nothing quite as ugly as once you put the face on this body. Here he is. Now here's his little buddy. Again, I'm just showing you two because I want you to see the difference in their faces. Look at their different faces. So what are these young gentlemen going to be looking like once you put the beard on? By the way, the beard is 100% wool from sheared, usually Lincoln sheep I use. So all of these I strip and get unknotted and put these on piece by piece, feathering and touching them, uh, touching them, cutting them. So I want you now to see the before and see the after. Can you believe the magic that happens from this point to this point? So as I was explaining before about all these different uses, just imagine this little guy, one of my favorites, was a beautiful hand knit sweater with a hole in it this big and it was hand knit in Ireland. The colors on here are spectacular. I walk downstairs and find a men's sport coat that has the exact blending. That's when it's fun. That's when you just just get goosebumps on pulling and putting these little guys together. These sweaters, as you saw pictures of them all cut in piece, each one is hand sewn onto their body. So you can't switch it off and put another sweater on. The reason I do that, instead of him looking like a doll, he looks like a little person. So I can tuck it in a little bit more. I can make the sleeves the right length instead of having that squared off cardboard look. The other thing, the last piece to my puzzle, was I wanted him to hold a lantern and I could not find the one the right size. And it was provided to me by Hobby Lobby two weeks ago when I walked in the door. I have my girls' friends going to all the different Hobby Lobbies and grabbing as many as they can because 
I think it finishes them off beautifully. So to have a face that almost makes you laugh and really afraid that you just blew it on your Santa to adding the beard and making that magic all fall together. This is my favorite time when they each come out with their own personality. My second most favorite time is when people start looking at their faces and go, oh, this one is mine. It looks like my grandfather or this one is mine. He's so kind. That's what I want to do for every person who comes and buys a Santa from me, is to see that personality and to enjoy it and love it. And of course, we were inspired by the little skate ornament. I have a few collections just to show you really fast this year to get you excited about the studio tour. This is my 22 inch Victorian. I've made these for 15 years and every year they're up and gone. A very special gift for somebody. But we've got the brand new True Norwegian Decora Vikings up here. The fun thing about these little boys, these helmets, which finally came after seven months, are from the museum in Norway. I have a hundred of them. And what's fun about these little boys is these crazy beards are actually a Decora product. Mike Hinker and his wife have Icelandic sheep and I bought some and washed it and carded it and gave it to Sarah Iverson who spun it into this wonderful crazy curls, little dreadlocks. And Larry Lupert carved the wonderful Viking pikes. So we have a lot of Decora, so I call him the true Norwegian Decora Viking. Now every once in a while we get a little crazy and we want something whimsical. These are brand new this year. They're about 36 inches tall. Fun to put by your fireplace or in a corner. My traditional woodland Santas are right here with their big fuzzy fur boots. And I have a sweet lady that does all the patchwork on them and then I put them together. Last year's special, the beautiful Victorian in the birch tree frame. The wonderful thing I love about this, it's on a six hour timer and then it shuts itself off. But after Christmas is over, you just slip him out and you have a winter scene in your house. How perfect is that? Okay, prototypes, sometime I do not make a hundred of and that's these guys, but I had so much fun doing them. Here's my fluffy, weird little toadstools. They're in, they're fun, but they take a long time to make, so we'll just have a few of those to tickle your taste buds. This is a comeback. I had so many requests for their Norwegian hen. This is a pattern from Norway about the little wool hen. So we'll have a few of those this year. Here's our great big bulbous nose guy flying in his radio flyer sled. I'm going to be calling him Reach for the Stars. He'll be in rustic colors and bright shiny colors. I think he's going to be a fun addition for this year. This Santa has been my pleasant surprise. Probably the second largest amount of Santas I've ever made. He's called the Long Hat Nissa. And the smaller faces that you saw, that's these little faces. These guys are made out of wool sweaters. This was a Norwegian sweater that was ruined. These little guys, um, I've made over a thousand of them in the last 10 years. When you look at the expression on each one of their faces, you can see that each of these have been hand sculpted by me and each has a different personality. That's what makes these Santas so special. This was new last year called the Believe Santa. And he's looking up into the skies, believing anything you want to believe the snowflake is up above, and the little medallion, believe, is there for him. These are my fun hand-pounded aluminum pendants and chokers, as you can see the one on me. There's my choker. I also make earrings. You use a hammer, different kinds of hammers. You flatten them down and put beautiful decorations. There, there's a whole story about the journey of life that you'll get with it that is very special to my heart. And then we always have fun, funky things. My mittens that are made out of wool sweaters, which I don't have any samples of yet, but we're going to have many more fun styles of my sassy gloves. They're gloves with an attitude. 
and we'll be having about 10 dozen of those ready by the studio tour. Thank you for letting me share my work with you. Now, because of the coronavirus, our always fun and very successful artist studio tour is taking a different path this year, virtual. Please go online, view the gallery photos and see our talented artist. We are excited to show you our new creations. Each of us will have ways that we can connect with you and you with us. I, this year, am going to be downtown at the Pinter store located on Water Street. Masks, limited people in the building. Also, I'm working with Facebook and FaceTime and emails and phone calls. It will be an adventure. Please come and join us. Thank you.